on Nick here with What Game Now, and this video is going to be my commentary on the ninth edition announcement. Um, the details on what the specific details on what they've announced, what I think about those, and kind of is this enough? Is this not enough? I don't know. Um, with respect to does this improve upon eighth edition? Now I do want to say a few things before we get going. First off, this is going to be a little more stream of consciousness, so it might be a little more scatterbrained. Second off, this is not going to be the world's most positive video, you have been warned. If you are expecting somebody to espouse how 9th edition is going to be the saving grace of 40k, spoiler alert, I don't think it's going to be. Um, the best way to describe my thoughts on the new edition are cautiously interested. We'll see how things go. And as we go along, hopefully you'll see why I feel that way. Now, keep in mind, everything in here is my own opinion. That's kind of important to understand. Um, so, let's go ahead and get started. So, right off the bat, they said one of the first things they wanted to do with 9th edition was to put into practice the things that they've learned from the community over the course of 8th edition. Now, while this may seem like a selling point, to me that's kind of like what you should do. So, congratulations. But I will, I will give Games Workshop credit on this. This is unique amongst them because this is the first edition after 8th edition, which was the first edition that they got very active in engaging the community on the community's terms. Going out to Adepticon, Las Vegas Open, Nova Open, really big US events, and encountering the game in the wild in areas outside of their own little comfort zone of the United Kingdom. So. That's a good thing. That that definitely is a good thing. I that sweet, good job. I do think it's something you should do, but it's worth noting because this is unique for them. On to the details. So they're not invalidating codexes or psychic awakening books. You are going to see new codexes in ninth edition, I'm fairly sure. This is par for the course. Nothing crazy here. Um, they said that they wanted to make it more flavorful and narratively fulfilling. I am not entirely sure what, how they're going to do that. I think what they're trying to do is make it so that weird things don't happen. One of the things that I, uh, the best descriptions I heard about people who complain about things like this are, it's the extreme cases that make people freak out. A very good video I watched a number of years ago was a, related to a video game call. Oh, so it wasn't years ago. It was actually a couple months ago. They do a game called Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun, where they they quote unquote solved pathfinding in the RTS genre, and essentially their argument was, don't make the AI smart, just make it not stupid. So I think that's kind of the same vein here, where they want to avoid things that aren't necessarily logical, which I can appreciate. There are a few very strange scenarios that can occur in 40k. They'll come up as we go through this video, but okay. They want to make sure that everybody is playing the same version of the game, and what this implied to me is that they're not happy with the various different, effectively home rule or um, house rules that get used across the world. If you go to various places in Europe, the United Kingdom, or the USA, you are going to encounter the game being played differently. Even though it's the same rules, they're not really playing the same game. They have either an accepted group of house rules, say the ITC packet for the US. Um, there's just the way that they approach the game. In general, the UK tends to be much more laid back beer and pretzels than the US. You know, okay, I get the idea that you want to unify this. I've always thought that the best game, there shouldn't be a distinction between casual and competitive players. There should just be the game, and whether you're trying your hardest or you're trying to be fluffy, it's the same thing. So, okay. They're launching an app for 9th edition. It is worth noting that they did promise us an app for a, a army builder for 8th edition, and that never materialized. Yeah, they came out with, um, what is it called, combat roster that works off power level, but that's like the last thing, at least to the US, what anybody wanted. Um, so, okay, you, you're going to have an app coming out. It's going to have army building. They mentioned a few other things like collection tracking. And Apologies, guys. I accidentally muted my mic, but... um. Anyway, there it's an app. It's gonna do army building and some other stuff. They promised us one for eighth. It wasn't an app, but you know, some kind of official digital support. We'll see how that goes. On to the actual 
details. So first thing they want to do is make clarifications and make the core rules as clear as possible. They specifically reference they use more examples, more obvious intent, so people can't argue intent. That was a very common thing. So the issue here is Games Workshop rules are written very inconsistently, where two people can read the same rule and come to different conclusions about what it's saying and what it's trying to say, and they're trying to minimize that, which is a good thing. Can they do it? We'll see. I'm fairly sure they tried to do this with 8th edition, or this was something they tried to make. It, when 8th edition came out and his 8th edition's life's been on, this is something they've been trying for. And yet here we are claiming that 9th edition is going to fix it. All right, I'm, I'm going to flat out say this right now. I have read, I'm looking at their nine points of things that we're trying. they said they're trying to do with the new edition. And they fall, to me, I, I look at them and I see one of two things. Either one, you're fixing a problem you introduced with 8th edition. Or two, you're doing something you should have already been doing, said you were doing with 8th edition, and failed. I'm, I'm just going to flat out say it. We're going to read these things. That That's my stance. This is very much a case of you said you were going to do this with 8th edition, and you are kind of admitting that you – you're essentially admitting that you failed. You have not done it to the extent that it should have been. Why should I have confidence that you're going to fix it? All right. Next up, more command points at the start of the game. Whoopee, command points are one of the favorite things about the new edition for a lot of people. Although, to be fair, it's not a bad mechanic. Um, so what the, this is a couple points here that they put together, but essentially they've shifted command points from being a thing that you generate through army construction to a thing that you generate based off of game size. So command points are based on game size, and you spend command points to unlock more detachments instead of going the reverse where you use detachments to unlock more command points. What happened was you ended up with some very strange looking lists that were not consistent with the fluff that were designed solely to break the game. This goes into that vein of the optimal thing and the fluffy thing I always thought should be the same thing. This is very much a case where they, they they came out with the army construction rules in 8th edition and the opposite happened. They claim they're trying to make 8th edition you know, reward you for playing a fluffy list with these command points, when in reality people just went for the command points and made lists that are just these weird chimeras of factions and armies and detachments and chapters that just... You would never see this in a book, you would never see this in a video game, but you're going to see it on the tabletop in some cases all the time. So. A consequence of this is there's going to be less souping. Um, souping is a term 40k players use to refer to mixing in different factions together. They, they want mono faction to be a thing. Sounds like this is a, a goal with 9th edition. So remember when I mentioned are they fixing a problem they created or something they should have already done? This is fixing a problem they already created. Next thing up, um, they reference that tanks are going to be able to shoot while in combat, specifically referring to the fact that if you charge a tank with a bunch of grots, the tank will kill the grots and then shoot something. Okay, um, keeping in mind that prior to 8th edition, the tank could simply back out of combat and shoot just fine. Again, you introduced this problem, now you're fixing it. Well, if you'd thought about it in the first place, you'd know this would have happened. A anyway, I'm... I'm going to try and avoid that tangent, but th this is this this really annoys me. Anyway, um, my other problem with this is I do not think this is the fix that they needed. Um, we'll get to this when we get to the 8th edition commentary, but while I understand what they're doing, you can work around tanks not being able to shoot in combat. You, pay, you take screening units, and actually it helped the fluffiness that tanks couldn't shoot while they were in combat. Because you had to bring infantry to screen them and keep enemy infantry off of them. So you know what? Okay, I actually thought that wasn't the end of the world. Next item, a complete ground up rebuild of terrain, specifically referencing cover and line of sight changes. Um, they flat out admitted that they overcorrected on making terrain too simple. And I'm glad for that, because I think terrain in 40k, quite frankly, is irrelevant. Um, the line of sight changes is encouraging to me. I think one of 40k's biggest failings is it uses true line of sight, and I haven't I don't think I've gone on this tangent on this channel, but the, the, the reason I dislike True Line of Sight is the only advantage of True Line of Sight is it's easy to explain. It's not easy to use. It's not easy to play with. You know you have a problem when people have to bring laser pointers and call over a third party to check Line of Sight. Play a game like Infinity. Play a game like War Machine. Play a game like Heavy Gear. Line of Sight is not... Ne you don't need to do that. Line of Sight is much easier to check 
without using true line of sight. So, okay. They want a game that plays well at all sizes. Now, I do give them credit. This is something that I think is very important. 40K kind of is designed optimally or feels designed optimally around the 2,000 point or so experience. The lower you go, the more problems you can have where some models can come in and just be so dominant. So I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this. They did say they picked several game sizes and kind of optimized around those, which is, again, very encouraging. Next up, they changed how reserves work. So currently reserves in 40K just kind of land and you can only put certain units in reserve and they have very strict rules on how they come on the table. Now you're going to be able to put stuff in reserve you normally couldn't and you can bring those units on from various table edges as the game progresses. So I, I, my, my reading of this is like maybe on the first one or two turns they can only come in off your back edge or in your deployment zone. Turns three and four they can come in off either side edge and then like turn five and six they can come off your opponent's back edge, which is very interesting. It's an interesting risk reward trade-off. I also like it from the perspective of gun lines. It is something that can punish a gun line. The gun line is going to have to move because starting on turn five they can get charged. Okay, again, potentially interesting change. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. They added a new weapon type called Blast, which is designed to deal maximum number of hits versus hordes. It's a little unclear exactly what they mean by this. My hearing of this was that it's a random number of shots that automatically counts as the maximum above a certain unit, when it targets something above a certain unit size. Again, an issue they created when they removed templates where a weapon just rolls a random number of shots and that's how many guys it hits regardless. And you get this weird situation of clumped up hordes and high explosive weapons not doing what you think they would. Um, my concern here is just like they overcorrected with terrain in 8th edition, they're going to overcorrect with this in 9th edition. Um, what does this look like for hordes? I've already heard some grumblings that, you know, hey, that green tide of orc infantry horde isn't really going to be a thing in 9th edition. That's concerning because that's kind of, I would think, how it works play. And then there's some armies like Tyranids who don't really have a choice. We'll see about it though. Aircraft rules. Um, so the interesting thing about aircraft right now is aircraft have some weird rules relating to how you have to move around them on the table. They have a base, but that base prevents you from moving around them even though the aircraft is in the sky and they basically crash and burn if they hit the magic wall at the edge of the table, and they said they've addressed both of those. Again, wasn't a problem in 7th edition, guys. You, you made this problem in 8th, so... The, the whole 9th edition just comes across to me as 8th edition wasn't what they wanted, so they're making it new, but they're fixing things that they created. Anyway, that's pretty much the conclusion of all they announced for 9th edition. So, let's take a moment and loop back to 8th and let me address a few things that I think I want to see addressed but may not be. So first off is too many additional rules and rule books. There are, um, and they, they, they said this is not changing because your books are still valid and you stay, it sounds like they still plan to use Psychic Awakening books. Right now it is four books yeah, it's four books to play a mono faction 40k I mean, you need the core rule book, you need your codex, Psychic Awakening, and the most recent chapter approved. Okay? You can't buy a book, one book, one codex, and play it. It doesn't work that way, and that, to me, really annoys me. And that's just for mono faction. Let's not even talk about what happens if you add in multiple factions, because you pick up two additional books per faction, potentially. You could have an army that needs eight books to play. And you know what? That's a little extreme, and I don't see 9th edition fixing that. If anything, it doubles down on it. Um, depending on how they make their app, maybe their app has some... Look, the best thing they could do is make a subscription app that includes all this stuff. Pay us a subscription fee, you get everything to play your army, no fluff, no pictures. Deal. Fantastic, but I, I doubt it. Okay. Um, I still don't like the idea that anything can wound anything. A little grot with a stick can kill a tank. Combine this with the fact that there's a lot of on a six get an extra hit or a six auto wounds, and you get some things punching or killing like vehicles that really don't feel like they should. One of the most effective tank hunting units in 40k right now is the Space Marine Intercessor Squad. 
you need the basic riflemen of the Space Marine Army. Equip them with um, Stalker bolt rifles and make them iron hands, or there's even an argument for Imperial Fists. And all of a sudden, you have a unit that actually can reliably strip large numbers of wounds off tanks. Um, there's an Imperial Fist um, Dreadnought build that was available for a while, I don't think you can do it anymore, that would like kill a knight on average between exploding dice and the fact that it could always wound, and hey, a bonus to wound, say, hey, you wound on a six, but I get plus one to wound, well, now you wound on a five. So it wasn't too hard to come back from wounding only on sixes. Uh, Blood Angels were a really good example of this. Um, Blood Angels get plus one to wound on the turn they charge. So if I only wound you on sixes, all of a sudden I wound on fives and sixes, even though there really shouldn't be any reason why. So this is... This ties back into that tank issue I mentioned. So the tanks, they, they're saying, okay, well, you can shoot in combat and do all this stuff now. Fantastic. The issue with tanks wasn't that. Okay, that wasn't what I was hearing people complain about. That wasn't what I was complaining about with tanks. The offensive power never bothered me because you could play around with that. It was the fact that, you know, 10 Space Marines turned their little rifles on your tank and all of a sudden you're missing half your wounds. Or maybe your tank's dead. Anything became a valid anti-tank option. And it removed diversity from the game, because now all of a sudden these devoted anti-tank units aren't necessarily as required anymore. And the stuff that it killed, it was too effective at killing. So I, I, mm, I don't see that being fixed with 9th edition. We'll see. Um, true line of sight, they are fixing. Well, okay, I hope they are fixing this. We'll see. Um, carrying on, meaningful terrain rules, they're addressing that. These are things I wrote out in advance. Short rules. So, I generally agree that simple rules are better, but Games Workshop rules are too simple and short. There's no structure to answer questions. If you have a question, good luck. I hope you can, I, I hope you can find an answer, I hope you can agree with something with your opponent. There isn't something in the rules to help you with that. Um, missions, they claim they're helping the missions. We'll see how that goes. Um, again... The, the guy that got helping them runs the Nova Open and runs their Nova Mission Pack, but that hasn't been the most popular of Mission Pack. You only really hear it in the Northeast in the U.S. Or I suppose so most people use the ITC. We'll see how that goes. I, I like the idea of not having various house rules for things like tournaments and all that. Excuse me. But uh, after... Good Lord, I've been with Games Workshop since... 2006, at some point you just lose hope. I've heard all of these promises before. Alright, um, organized play. Games Workshop has not said in any way that they're picking up organized play. I don't see that changing, although if they have a uniform game packet, that will help. The last two things I'm fairly certain are not going to get fixed, but are things that drive me nuts, and I would like to see a ninth edition, but I know aren't. First off, I think there's too much randomness. If you have a psychic power that makes a shooting attack, if it's ran it's six dice rolls to resolve. Roll to cast, opponent's roll to deny, roll to hit, roll to wound, roll to save, and then if your opponent has a feel no pain save, which most stuff does, or a shocking amount of things do, could potentially be five dice rolls. And then, if it's a random number of shots, that's seven dice. If it's a random damage attack, it's eight. Eight dice rolls to resolve one power. Are you kidding me? There's so many roll to see if you can roll to see to roll to hit. Roll this to roll this to roll this. It's ridiculous. I would. Um, this also applies to charges. The amount of times I've seen a unit that moves 12 inches on its normal turn fail a 4-inch charge drives me up a wall. There's no reason that unit should fail. Minimum six would be fine. Just something to prevent it, because there's no advantage. If you're a close combat unit, there's no advantage to being fast when it comes to making your charge, and it feels like that's the place it would matter most. And then the last thing is, um, hopefully they address this. I, I, I kind of got the impression at least one of these might be addressed. Lack of counterplay or too powerful counterplay. So... Some things like CZ Initiative in 40k are purely random. You have no control over it and are potentially game-breaking. 
based off what I've observed, if you play just baseline 40k, about 80% of the games where somebody seizes the initiative, they win. Now you may say, oh, well, you have to plan around that. But you get in this prisoner's dilemma of both of you have to plan around going second. And combine this with the lack of meaningful terrain rules that make hiding very hard. How random some things are, and I just I don't think this is a fun mechanic. I, I've never seen somebody happy because CZ Initiative was in the game. Okay, I, I just it 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 doesn't it, it just it doesn't work for me. The other thing is sometimes there's too much counterplay. The best example here I can give you is their character targeting rules, um, which keep in mind that characters in 40k are really powerful. They're either buff bots or close combat monsters. So for those of you who aren't familiar, in 40k, if you have a character and the model has, a, has the character keyword, you cannot target that character unless it has more than 10 wounds or it is the closest unit to the shooting unit. Now, here's the problem. Let's say my entire army is surrounding a character of yours and they're all 18 inches away from your character. Wide open, your character standing there in the middle of my entire army. But 12 inches away from my entire army is a model hiding in a building that my entire army cannot see. I can't shoot the character. That is infuriating. That is not at all fluffy or consistent with the narrative. And you know what? Sometimes that character is going to win the game for you. I've literally lost games because of that situation. There was a, a situation at the end of the game where pretty much my entire army had one Sisters of Battle cannoness lined up and all they had to do was kill her. And I won the game. The problem was that there was one other sister on the table hiding in a building that I, none of my models could see, but was closer than that character, and I couldn't shoot the character. This is not fun. This is not interesting. This is not engaging. This is not narrative. This is frustration and idiocy. So I know this kind of went into a dark and negative place. Um, I'm sorry if that hurt, if that was a problem, but that's my opinions. That's why I generally don't like 40k as a game of the games that I own models for it is quite literally the last second to last one on my list behind Age of Sigmar so with that guys have a good one um, and I will see you guys next time hey this is Dave if you like what we're doing here at what game now go ahead and click on one of the videos which should be on either side of me or click right in the middle and go ahead and subscribe to the channel don't forget to hit the bell once you subscribe so that you know when we have new videos please go ahead and share us with your friends let everybody know that we're here. Thank you for watching and thank you for all of our subscribers already. And we look forward to bringing you more content every chance that we get.